So today I wanted to go through my preview for what I think I'm going to be sewing in April and I do stress the preview bit because I'm always changing my mind you know not just because I had to change my mind just for the sake of it but also circumstances change you know you get crop failures new opportunities open up all sorts of things so um, this is my preview starting off with salad onions uh, actually, to just say, this isn't in order of sewing. This is in grouped by type of veg. When you look at this down in the link down below, it'll be in order of sewing. But I think it's easier for me to go through it grouped by type of veg. So I'm starting with the alliums. Always doing salad onions. Got loads of salad onions up here, of course. You know, need lo and loads of salad onions in the ground. But you know, you can't. I can't get enough of salad onions. I think they're great. Start off with guardsmen. I think Garsman's the you know one of the best uh, salad onions for spring, uh, but it's not a great salad onion for summer. I prefer Summer Island, so I'll do a test sowing at Summer Island just to make sure that the seed packets that I've got germinate well. And assuming that they do, a bit later on uh, in the month or next month, I'll start with Summer Island. They do pretty well through summer and into early autumn, and then back to sort of Guardsman and Lilia and North Holland Blood Red and all my favourites later on. So then I'm doing my main crop leeks. So you might think, well, these leeks are a bit late, April. Well, they've got plenty of leeks on the go. So I've got these leeks here, which are for summer, uh, early summer, and I've got these for sort of midsummer. Uh, then I've just sown the ones that we're gonna be eating in autumn. And then these are the ones that we're gonna be eating in sort of mid to late winter and spring. I like to do it like that just because I don't have bed space to put all my leeks in at the same time. I don't like massive leeks that are this sort of thick. I prefer them about this, about one inch thick. Um, and I just find also just by staggering them, it's less likely that they're all going to get rust, that they're all going to get pests, that they're all going to get some other sort of disease, or that they're all going to bolt on me. So uh, yeah, I find that just by staggering them, uh, it works well. In fact, one of my little mantras is abundance through diversity. And part of the diversity is to have lots of successions of things planted in different places. Uh, it reduces your exposure to risk, no end. So I'm going to do my second batch of collets. I've got my first batch of collets down there, which are coming on quite nicely. Uh, actually, this is my third batch of collets. I've got my main crop batch of collets that I did back in March. And then just in case, because collets are one of our favorite veggies, just in case a bit of space opens up that I didn't expect, because I have a crop failure or something like that, or even a sowing failure and something fails to germinate and I miss a sowing window, I'd just like to have a few spare collets. I can bung them in then, and uh, yeah, then we just have an abundance of collets in winter and nobody ever complains about that because it's such a fantastic crop. Um, and I'm gonna do another batch of red cabbages. I've got a nice batch of little red cabbages coming on here. These are my first ones. I've got some in the ground that are much bigger than these, and then I've got these uh, which will go out as well. We like to have red cabbages pretty much all the way through the year. We, won't, we don't quite make it. We've just finished our last red cabbage and it'll be a few months before we get them again. But you know, 10 months is better than no months or eight months or whatever. Uh, I've chosen Ladero because these will almost certainly go on the allotment and the allotment's got club root and Ladero is a club root resistant variety. Um, and then I'll just do a few more breast Brussels sprouts again because these, they're the variety I like to do in the kitchen garden. And again, if I get a little bit of space opening up, I'll just bundle in a few sprouts because we really like sprouts in winter as well. Uh, and same with Calabrese. So all of those basically are kind of just a few plants, like six plants each of those, just in case an opportunity th throws itself up. And of course the seeds are really cheap. So yeah, it's definitely worth it. Mikado spinach is my next one and some Santa Cruz spinach. These are both varieties that are slow to bolt. When we get to April, we really need to be putting slow to bolt things in because it gets pretty warm by the time these are ready for harvest in May. And um, yeah, so cool, cool nights, but warm days, and that sort of sends spinach to seed pretty quickly. So I always think that the Asian spinach, Mikado, is a sort of superior spinach for that sort of time of year. And in fact, it's just a superior spinach full stop. But I do like a smaller true spinach, uh, which is good for salad leaves. 
uh, and Santa Cruz is the one we're trying for that this year. First sowing of chard, any earlier, chard tends to just go to seed on you. Um, but from April onwards, it's pretty reliable. Sometimes it still goes to seed if the weather conditions are really hot uh, and dry. But uh, if you keep it well watered, then you stand a better chance. Um, and I will do another batch probably of chard later on. But for now, first batch of chard is sort of early April, as is the first batch of sweet corn. And then we come on to the squashes. So I am doing one early squash to go in the polytunnel, and that is sweet dumpling, because sweet dumpling's really good eaten immature. It's a really lovely little squash for that. You know, when it's about this sort of size, I could eat, eat a whole of the squash, the skin and everything. Uh, so that works really nicely. And then all the other squashes, center cut squash, trumpuccinos, uh, sweet dumpling, crown prince and all of that, all those other squashes are to go on, on the allotment, on the big climbing frames. I don't have space to grow squash on the ground, uh, but I've got lots of these big climbing frames that basically take the place of fences on my allotment plot, and I can get a good few squashes on those. And then we come on to the melons. So the first melons are going in one of these spots where one of these trees is in the corner. Um, and that is going to be Minnesota Midget, and I sowed that back in March. These ones that I'm doing in April, I'm doing two successions of them, one to go in the polytunnel and one to go in the low tunnels. The polytunnels are a little bit warmer than the low tunnels, so I can get away with starting those off two or three weeks earlier than the ones that go in the low tunnels. And that's worth it with melons, because otherwise they all come at once, and much as we love melons, we can't get through that many all at once. So I'm doing champagne, Minnesota midget, uh, Amir, and honeydew, and Malaga, and that's it basically. And I think how many am I doing? I'm doing three of my big coal frames actually, rather than low tunnels. They're deep coal frames, about this deep. Uh, so I'm doing three of those, doing one plant in each. So I'm doing six plants in uh, the coal frames, two plants in the polytunnel, and one plant in here. So quite a few melons. I'm doing some courgettes, which are actually going to go into containers in the polytunnel. So this is my second earlies. The first earlies are going to be in this greenhouse, second earlies in the polytunnel, and then the main crop will be split a couple in the polytunnel beds and a couple outside. Bit of parsley. I've got loads of peas on the go, but I'm still doing peas. So I'm gonna do one batch of peas to go in the garden down there. Uh, I've got two sets of early peas in the corners here, which will go outside in April. And I've got a low tunnel on the allotment full of peas as well. And I'll take the top off that low tunnel sometime in April. So generally speaking, all my peas are outside by April, making space for other stuff in this greenhouse. I'm doing my Cobra French beans for the polytunnel. So I've already done back in March my Cobra French beans to go in one of these two corners here to grow up and along. Uh, and then I'm also doing amethyst and sprite dwarf French beans to go in the polytunnel and long row just in front of my tomatoes and just behind my beetroot. And right now, there's Asian greens and lettuce where those French beans are going to go. So then I've come to my main crop, you might think, uh, or I tend to call it, sowing of potatoes. These are just the ones that are going to go straight in the ground or straight in the containers without any fuss and bother. So I've got quite a lot of potatoes in here already. I've got three months supply of potatoes. The earliest ones I start off in a pot like this and then just transplant two to a pot um, after a few weeks. And then the later ones I start off in a pot like this. It just gives me a couple of weeks uh, earlier harvest. Well, maybe three weeks earlier harvest. And that's worth it because we tend to run out of stored potatoes 
towards the end of April. So we really need more potatoes uh, towards the end of April and well into May. Um, and then obviously a nice continuous supply until summer. And by summer, these potatoes that I'm talking about here tend to be ready. And I'm doing Charlotte and Jazzy and Sarpa Mira and Sarpa Una and Estima. Um, and uh, yeah, in lots of different places. So some in really big circular containers about this big, uh, where I'm doing my early baking potatoes, some just straight in the ground and some in sort of 35 litre pots. So yeah, lots of uh, different ways to grow potatoes to compare there. And then I'm doing celery. I've already got quite a lot of celery actually. So I've got these nice little plants here, which are doing quite nicely. Um, and they're the ones that will go in the polytunnel and they'll be ready for harvest just as the overwintered celery is finishing. And that's it for celery. And then I'm going to do two Sean carrots. So last back in March, I did faster growing carrots, things like early Nance too and what's it called, mochum. The challenge with those carrots is that they don't hold in the ground very well, so you've got to do lots of little batches of them, kind of every two weeks you do a sowing of them, uh, whereas something like Touchon, it just holds in the ground for months. So you can just do one big batch and just eat it all the way through autumn, for example. So uh, yeah, so that's why we do Touchon, and then later on in May, we do Eskimo, and Eskimo holds in the ground all the way through winter and all the way through until pretty much the end of April, really. So then I'm on to beetroot. I've got loads of beetroot in the ground growing really nicely that I sowed back in December. Plants about this big now. Um, but I just do another batch. I'm doing Boldor, uh, Pablo and Albina. So three different colours, gold, uh, red and white. And they're going to go at the back of my low tunnels so that the peppers go in, not these peppers, because these peppers here are going on these benches where these potatoes and lettuce are. And when this is moved over here, they're going to go on the bench that runs down the back there as well. So I'm going to have loads of peppers in here. But the peppers that I've just pricked out that are under grow lights back inside, those uh, are going to go in three of my low tunnels. And then I say at the back of the low tunnels, I'll have uh, beetroot and seem to do really well there. Beetroot really thrive in the heat. Um, although they're a cold tolerant crop, they really love the warmth. So uh, yeah, they do really well there. And then later on in uh, late April, early May, I do the beetroot that we're going to have for our storage crop. Um, and it depends. So I normally do it in May. Depends how sunny a location I'm planting it. And I'm going to do my first session of golden purslane to grow outside in the kitchen garden there. And then loads of lettuce. And I generally don't go through the lettuce because there's so many different varieties that we're doing. Um, and you can look them up. They're all This database is linked down in the description below. Uh, but loads of different lettuces because I like loads of different lettuce leaves in my salad mixes. And then talking the salad mixes, I come on to the tomatoes. And I've already got my little tomatoes in here. Uh, these are the ones that are going to go into hanging baskets um, in uh, in this greenhouse up here, sort of height there, hopefully just above my head. Um, and yeah, they should give us a really nice harvest in spring. And then these are the tomatoes for the polytunnel, the corn tomatoes. I'm doing, some of these are grafted and I buy them from Dobby's and I never have a great experience, but I keep coming back because they grow so well, even though their packaging is rubbish and the quality is rubbish <laughs> often, they, they really, once they're planted out, they see, pull themselves together and grow really well. Uh, we were really happy with the Crimson Plum last year and the Aviditas last year and the Honeycomb last year. And I just supplement those with a few San Marzano and a few honeycomb from seed. The reason I tend to do grafted is because I grow in the same soil every year. And grafted are just more resilient, really, I think, to that situation. 
than uh, something that's grown from seed. Um, and I'll do some tigerella along the wall here on the patio at the back there. I'll do some sun gold there as well. And then I'll do my tumblers right towards the end of April. Uh, they're the ones that are going to grow outside on the patio. So I'll have some tumblers which I'll do back in March which will go in the polytunnel in containers. But uh, yeah, we do loads of tumblers and three successions as I say, one in the greenhouse, one in the polytunnel and one on this patio. And that is it for April. So there's a lot to keep track of there. And I do recommend that you subscribe to my newsletter because basically it just drip feeds this information on a week by week basis as well as loads of other information about gardening, about managing a polytunnel, about managing a greenhouse, about year-round growing, about pests and diseases, about bed management, you know, about techniques, all sorts of stuff, as well as when to sow, when to pot on, when to prick out, when to plant, how to plant, everything like that. So, yeah, I think I'm done. My name's Steve. This is the Seaside Kitchen Garden and Allotment Channel, and I'll see you soon.